Previously on Legit Street Cars, I showed you guys how to clean pistons using a wax string. I also cleaned up the cylinder heads on my SVT Lightning and everything was going great. Well, at least that's how I made it look in the video. The reality was, deep down inside, I was not doing great. <laughs> the CL65 was in. Alex, Alex, we gotta, we gotta record, dude. Oh, yeah, gotta, we gotta, we gotta Get it together, get it together, right. come on. All right, all right. All right, so now we're gonna clean up the cylinder head with some good old carbon choke cleaner. <laughs> Come on, dude, we gotta do it. We gotta finish the video. Just another, another, you know. While filming that video, I found catastrophic damage to my SVT Lightning engine, and since the video was about showing you how to clean the engine and the damage didn't affect that, I sucked it up, put a smile on my face, and continued on. So in this video, I'm going to remove my SVT Lightning engine, put it on a stand, fully disassemble it, and see if there's anything we can save. And then after that, we're gonna celebrate because I have a bad engine. That just means I can make it go much faster. So I was bummed for eh, like about one second after I found what I'm gonna show you guys, but then I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, we can build a forged motor and then get a ported blower. And, and then I went out and got a ported blower. Let me show you. So like within 24 hours of finding out that my engine's basically screwed, I went and got this, a used ported blower. It needs to be repainted. Um, but yeah, this thing is all ported, the upper intake, the blower, and then this is filled with epoxy. So now the lightning is gonna do one of these every time I rev it up, even at idle, it's gonna go so originally I was just gonna replace the head gaskets, then I get the heads off and I'm like, I gotta do some long tube headers. And I wasn't really planning on building the motor, but I, I definitely wanted to. And not that I needed an excuse, but this just makes me feel so much better. I'm just hoping we can reuse the block. That would be nice. The block and the crank. That's all I want. That's all I want from you, 5.4. And I was gonna do this part anyway, even if I wasn't gonna build the motor because I was gonna replace the oil pan gasket and the engine mounts, but now we're gonna get it on the engine stand, flip it around be able to replace everything. This thing is gonna be sweet. This transmission is absolutely ginormous. I believe this is the same trans that was in the uh, Super Duty diesel trucks at the time. They needed something that could hold up and a big transmission out of a diesel truck would definitely work for that. There we go. Yay! It's out. All right, you guys wanna see it? You wanna see what I found in that video? Before I show you who actually saw it in the previous video, because there is maybe like one or two seconds in a frame where you can see it, sort of, and a couple guys saw it, like literally two out of like a couple hundred thousand saw it. So let me know in the comment section if you know what it is right now, no cheating, and here it is. Here is the issue with my engine. Right there, we're missing something. Right, right, there's a little void. It's it's larger than the rest. That is the piston. The piston has come apart. You can actually see the ring in there that's kind of mangled as well. So we're gonna get a much better look at this carnage once we pop this piston out here in a few minutes. But the cylinder wall may have been damaged a little bit and I think it can be honed and bored out and fixed, but we won't know until we kind of disassemble like everything and just get a really good look at it. Another reason why I wanna just rebuild this engine anyway is there is a decent amount of cylinder scoring here as you can see. So this thing was just overall not in the best of condition. If you guys have been around since the beginning of the Lightning series, you know that we had a lot of rust in the block as well. It took me like 20 coolant flushes to get it sort of clean. It's still rusty in there. Um, so there are just a lot of things pointing to this is an excellent candidate to rebuild. And now this one is staring us in the face saying, rebuild me, rebuild me. We just pulled the piston up a little bit more so you can see it. And then yeah, if we go all the way down and you can really see the rings are just destroyed. Look at that. So there was definitely some detonation that happened with this motor. But yeah, right in here, you can see, see that right there? There is some scoring in this cylinder. A lot of them are scored up. Look at right in here too, you can see. So anyway, let's get this huge transmission off and get the engine on a stand. I wonder if Keeps would regrow the piston. Let's give that a try. Eh, I guess it's, just for your head. Well, apparently putting keeps on the dome of a piston won't prevent piston loss, but it can help the two out of three men by the age of 35 who experience some form of male pattern baldness like me. So keeps is a subscription service that makes treating male pattern baldness easy and affordable by keeping everything online 
and it's as easy as a few drops on your head. Getting started with Keeps is super easy. Just go to keeps.com slash legit. Once you're there, you're gonna answer a few simple questions, consult with a real doctor from the comfort of your own home, come up with a game plan, and then Keeps gets shipped automatically and discreetly to your home. And the results speak for themselves. Guys, if you've been procrastinating about finally treating your male pattern baldness, do not delay. The earlier you get started with this, the better it works. And if you click on my link down below, keeps.com slash legit, you're gonna get 50% off your first order. So no more excuses. Don't wait until your dome looks like my bad piston. All right, let's disconnect this transmission from the engine. Whoa, Peter, whoa. I got excited. You did. I mean, geez, I want to get to this motor too, but. Okay, now let's get the starter off. Well, someone's definitely been in there. Look at this torque converter nut. It's kind of mangled. All right, I think they tried to remove those converter nuts through the starter, which is what I was thinking too, but there is a nice rubber plug here that gives you access to Converter nuts. Oh, this is perfect. Thank you, Ford. Thank you so much. You're the best. I mean, many parts of this engine don't hold up very well, but you're the best for giving us this little plug. All right, first converter nut. All right, so there's six of these. This is the last one. So far, so good. Nice. All right. The last thing you want to do is strip out torque converter nuts, but we are golden. All right, it's time to remove this transmission. All right, separate. There we go. All right, let's get this thing out of here and we will put it on the stand. I'm excited to see what the oil looks like too and to see if the bearings, the rod bearings got beat up because clearly this was detonation. So. Aside from melting and breaking pistons, you can also beat up the bearings pretty good. So I'm curious to see what those look like. And the common failure point with these motors, once you add a little bit of boost and power, are the rods. The rods can break, and we didn't have that. We had kind of an uncommon failure, I guess. But a bad tune will destroy any pistons, even forged ones. All right, I got some writing here on the flex plate. 02, 07, 02, yeah. Let's get this flex plate off. All right, we're gonna remove the flex plate right now. And on a lot of these, you don't have to mark anything, but I just like to put stuff back together the way it came apart. And we're gonna scribe that too, because we're gonna probably have to send this crank out. Right. I'm just gonna make a little line here, and we'll do the same here at the back of the crank. There we go. And now it looks like we have a little spacer plate there. And let's take a look at this rear main. It definitely had a little bit of seepage there. Nothing too crazy, but it'll be nice to get a new one in there. All right, the last time I used the engine stand was for the Caprice. And it looks like we'll be able to use the same bolts that we used on that one too, same thread and everything. All right, so you gotta be smarter than the stand. Always bring the stand up to the engine and this is always missing so a cutoff head bolt works all right she's landed excellent our first ford motor on a stand here at legit street cars some tells me this this won't be the last so i just used old head bolts to lift our engine out in the front so we're going to be putting studs in this motor so these head bolts we can use for a tool to lift the engine out. I'm supposed to replace these anyway, so they're garbage. These self levelers are really nice. I highly recommend them. You can move it around so that your engine is flat, especially when you're taking it out with the trans. You can move it all the way to one end and then the trans will come out sort of even. It's still gonna drag it down a little bit, but these are really nice. All right, and then Another great add-on if you're doing engine work is one of these drain pans. So it fits in right here, and then when we flip the engine over, there's gonna be some drippage from oil and coolant that's left over, so this will catch it. All right, let's get these hoses off of the oil cooler. So these are coolant hoses that go into this housing and keep the oil in check. Now, on some cars, they have a thermostat for this system, 
so that the oil warms up to a certain temperature quickly because you want your oil to be at the proper operating temperature. Having super cooled engine oil is definitely not good. That's why you're not supposed to beat on a car until you've gotten that oil up to operating temperature. It's always satisfying to break the seal of hoses that have been on for a long time. Possible these have never been off. This truck only has 85,000 miles. And if you guys missed it in the last video, I found out from a subscriber who ran the VIN that this engine was replaced in 2003 when the Lightning had only 400 miles and had a bottom end noise. And that's why we have the updated cylinder heads with the eight threads per spark plug. Um, they had an issue with the four threads where they would pop spark plugs out. All right, we're gonna flip this engine over. And at this point, you're gonna see why this drain pan is so nice. Ooh, look at that nasty coolant. I flushed this thing so many times and it's still got that rust look to it. Well, because it literally got rust in it. Woo! There we go. All right, so next up, we're gonna remove the engine mounts, which look to be in really good shape. So all of this is just kind of flaking off, but there's nothing wrong with the actual rubber. So these solid rubber mounts can last like the lifetime of the vehicle. In some cases, it's the hydraulic filled mounts that usually have issues. So easy with the engine out. So I don't know if I'm gonna do poly engine mounts or not. I'm really not a big fan of transferring a bunch of vibration into the cab. But let me know in the comment section if you guys have one of these Ford truck engines with the poly mounts. Is it worth it? Is it too shaky inside? I don't know. I got them on the Turbo Trans Am and they're not that bad, but I don't think we need to replace them because of deficiencies in strength. These are gonna hold up fine. So I'm stripping this down to a bare block because we have to send it out. Just hoping it can be reused. I'm sure it can be. Ew. Okay. So this is a really nice gasket right here. Awesome. So I don't know if these have too many issues leaking when you see these really nice thick ones with the rubber O-rings built in. They're usually pretty good, but anything can get brittle and start to leak. So I'm glad we're replacing this, that's for sure. This looks to be a little difficult to do with the engine inside the cab. Something else I'm really happy about is being able to clean all this. Look at this. Oh, this is so bad. I don't know if we would have ever been able to flush this out. All right, guys, it's oil pan time right now. So we're getting closer to pulling these rods and pistons out. Getting closer to some more carnage. I'm really excited to see what the rings look like because they, they look melted. And although this carnage is gonna cost me a little bit, it's still fun to see, all right? I've already accepted it, it's bad. I get to build it. So we might as well enjoy some carnage. Maybe we'll have something to hang up on the wall. Who knows? So easy with the engine out. All right, let's see what we got at the bottom of the oil pan. So we're gonna have a little bit of coolant in here just from this thing being disassembled and coolant kind of leaking all over the place. I'm not worried about that. Um, we have sludge. Again, this thing has been disassembled now for a while with coolant leaking everywhere. So I'm not really too concerned about this. We don't have any metal. I don't feel any metal at all. Yeah, I don't really see any shiny glittery stuff. Okay, all right, cool. Not bad. Oh, and I got to mention the massive sale on Sonic Tools real quick because it ends in a few days, but they're having a blowout Father's Day sale up to 30% off. These tools are great. I've been using them for about a year now here at Legit Street Quarters. And one of my favorite parts is the tool organization from Sonic. So that comes with these foam liners and they're all labeled. So you always know where your tools go. These tools come with a lifetime warranty and you don't have to wait for a tool truck any longer. In some cases, you can just send a picture in of the broken tool and they'll mail you a new one in 24 hours. So I'll leave a link down below. Check out Sonic Tools. Another very nice gasket Ford. I like it. It's gonna replace, that's for sure, but these are sweet. All right, let's remove the pickup next. And I think you can replace the oil pump with the oil pan on. You just have to be really sneaky with probably just this one here. I think you can access this guy. On the LS engines I've done, you always put a magnet in this area just in case it falls. All right, let's pop this guy out. We have an O-ring. Let's see how bad this O-ring is. If you guys watch my Mercedes content 
then a couple of years ago, someone had made a video about the pickup O-ring for the M113K engine that's in my E55 and a bunch of other cars. Uh, would get hard and cause oil pressure issues. And that is not the case for this. And honestly, I don't think it was the case for the Mercedes either. I think that was really rare. I had never seen an issue with that before in my life. But yeah, this O-ring looks good. All right, let's remove our crank sprocket. And this is only gonna go on one way because it's keyweighed. So we don't have to worry about anything there. And now we can remove our factory Ford oil pump. And I read online that you can use the GT500 oil pump on this engine. And it's a higher volume, higher flow pump. And it works well in the Lightning engines, especially after you build them up. So we're definitely gonna do that. It's only like 80 bucks or something too. So a nice little upgrade. And since we're gonna need to turn the crank, we could just put the bolt back in, but a 32 millimeter six point fits perfectly over and it uses that keyway. And we're not applying any real force to anything at this point. It'll be really easy to spin the motor. So at this point, we're going to start from the back. So we'll just expose both of these sets of rod bolts here. And I believe this is an 11. Yep, an 11 mil. There we go. And I got to say, these fine tooth ratchets from Sonic are absolutely amazing. Some of the best ratchets I've ever used. All right, so we'll go ahead and take these bolts out. And there we go. Very nice. Let's take a look at this bearing. Yeah, it's in great shape. 85,000 miles, looking really nice. So these are cracked connecting rods. So if you look here at the side profile, this isn't perfect at all. It literally looks like it was cracked. And these connecting rods are made as one piece and then they are precision cracked. So they don't just cut them flat. They break the connecting rod and then the two pieces fit together perfectly. It's kind of like a fingerprint no two connecting rods are gonna be the same because of this method. And because these fit together perfectly, it adds a lot to the strength of the connecting rod. So even though the connecting rods are the weak point of the SVT Lightning, it's not because the caps are coming apart. All right, at this point, we're gonna remove this connecting rod and piston. And you'll see a lot of guys smack this with the other end of the hammer, which is fine. But for the initial removal off the crank, I like to use my two fingers here like this so we're protecting the journal of the crank, because the last thing you want to do is have it halfway down and then it smacks the crank journal and causes a scratch. Once it gets to this point, we're pretty much clear as far as it damaging anything. And in a lot of cases, you can just use your hands to push this entire thing out. So I'm not hitting it with anything. I'm literally just pushing. There we go. It's a boy. It's a boy. All right, now at this point, I'm going to turn the piston on the wrist pin so that we have full control of the other end of the rod. We don't wanna just scrape it down the cylinder wall. Okay, not a lot of clearance there, but you can do it. You can get it out without scratching anything. It's hard to see on camera, but this connecting rod has 590 written on it. If you see here, this end does not have the 590 stamp. So you know this connecting rod cap goes this way, and this is really cool. You can see the crack, and it's perfect right there. So if you have it off a little bit, slide it in. It's got to basically disappear. You know you're good when you really can barely see it. So that's how you put the cap back and then these pistons are marked with a little arrow. I didn't clean all of them because these are essentially junk pistons at this point. There we go. And this arrow is going to point to the front of the engine. So you can't really mess this up when you're putting it back together. You got your arrow right there and then it would go back in just like this. Another bit of SVT Lightning technology that's used in a lot of engines is a full floating wrist pin. So this is our wrist pin here. And some engines have a semi floating wrist pin where it's fixed in the rod and it pivots in the piston. But as you can see here, if we hold this, it'll pivot independently on the wrist pin and it spins also in the piston. So this is a full floating wrist pin. Let's check out the condition of this piston. It was coated. Some of the coating has come off. That's pretty typical at 85,000 miles. This isn't really in that bad of shape, but yeah, you can see here the coating is pretty much all gone where it matters. But overall, the rings look good. We have the bottom oil ring and then the two top compression rings. And when you set these back up, you don't ever want it to look like that. These have to be opposite of each other. All right, let's get through these rods and pistons. We only have a couple left to go before we get to our suspect. And by suspect, I mean completely destroyed and melted piston. Another perfectly good bearing. So just remember when you're pushing this down, you can use two hands, you can use two fingers, get it past the crank. That's the most important part. Oh wow, look at this. 
We found another messed up piston. Ooh, that is chewed up. Wow, I didn't see that from the top. This piston is not good. So this one was about to blow out the ring land. So typically when you have detonation, you blow out the ring land, which is this part of the piston all the way around here. And then it just exposes this top compression ring. And this was getting eaten alive. Look at this. This is just rough, like 80 grit sandpaper. It's literally got chunks coming out. Engine carnage. I love it. I love it. You're getting replaced, little buddy. That's right. All right, let's just take a look at the crank journal here. And it's looking really nice. Can't feel anything, which is expected after taking a look at those bearings. So, so far, so good. I mean, we definitely had a little bit of detonation or something going on with that rod and it didn't beat the crank up at all. I like that. All right, so I'm just gonna bring the next two up here to the top. I thought we were only gonna get one piston with carnage, but apparently not. We could have a lot of carnage on everything. Let's just hope the block is okay. Although I think I'm gonna get it bored probably like 10 over anyway. So it'd have to be a pretty deep scratch to condemn this block. But not 100% sure. Let me know in the comments, guys. But is the SVT Lightning engine the same block as all of the other trucks that this engine came in? I think they just added a forged crank to the Lightning um, and then different pistons for compression ratio reasons, maybe slightly stronger rods. I'm not really sure. Um, but the block could be the same. All right, so this bearing stayed with the crank. No biggie. How are we going to have more piston carnage? Come on, little guy. Hey, I think we got a good piston. Good job, little buddy. You survived. Yeah, a lot less wear on the skirts, too. Look at that. The coating is still intact. Well, at least on that side. Yeah, there's definitely a decent amount of wear here going on. But uh, this one survived the bad tune or bad fuel or whatever was going on with this motor. Good job, Piston. And if you're ever wondering if you put the wrong rod cap on, it might look something like this. If you see this, that's bad. But if you see this, where it completely disappears, that's good. I think we're only a rod or two away from the really bad one. Oh, this one's rough too. It's amazing how well this motor ran. So I drove it, I think four or 5,000 miles with the semi bad head gasket that would only show its symptoms if you got into boost it would pressurize the cooling system and blow coolant all over the place but other than that it would never overheat you could drive it from here to california no issues whatsoever this thing didn't blow any smoke it didn't use any oil and i'm sure the pistons have been bad for a really long time i mean a lot of them this is really rough around the edges it's just crazy you would never you would never know All right, let's take a look at these bearings first. So this is the bearing on the side that has the really bad piston. It's got some wear, nothing too bad though. Usually when you see the bearings destroyed from detonation, they have a clear shiny spot in the middle. You can see the wear marks where the detonation is just making this bearing just beat itself up on the crank. All right, I'm gonna flip the engine around for this guy. I wanna take the piston out and then really get a good look at the cylinder walls, see if they're scraped up. All right, guys, it's super carnage piston time. Let's get this guy out of here. It's so bad. Oh, okay. Hello. Well, I got a piece of ring here. That's nice. <laughs> oh, man, look at this. This is so bad. Get out of my block. Oh, <laughs> wow. Look at this, it looks like a smiley face. Hello, hello governor. Oh, this is horrible. I cannot believe how well this engine ran. It didn't use any oil. I drove it like four, 5,000 miles, something like that, probably with a piston like this. And honestly, the fact that it had a blown head gasket where I couldn't get into boost, otherwise it would pressurize the cooling system, probably saved everything here because I wasn't able to beat on it to kind of finish the job because this ring land is just about to snap off completely. This is so bad. Yeah, look at this, just flaring up. It's just been melted and disintegrating. Wow. So yeah, maybe a forged piston would have held up a little bit better, but uh, a forged piston won't make up for a dangerous tune. This also could have been bad fuel, but it was most likely really high ignition timing, too high boost pressure, a lot of heat, and this is what happens. So these have the water to air intercooler systems and the pump can fail on those as well. And I'm not sure exactly how good Ford's 
safety features in the ECU are. I'm sure it dumps all the timing when it sees intake air temperatures get really high, but sometimes that's too late. But I just took this ring off here. And uh, yeah, this is a really bad piston. So anyway, let's, uh, let's take a look at the most important part, which is the cylinder. All right, here we go. Let's give it a little wipe. And yeah, you can see can definitely see some scoring in there, especially towards the bottom. Okay, so the top isn't too bad, but yeah, there you go. So I think that piston could have done a lot more damage than this. This really isn't bad at all, and it'll definitely go away once it gets bored. But yeah, I can definitely feel a little bit of scuff in here. So what happens when you get into boost and continue to detonate when your piston already looks like this is it starts to look like this. <laughs> this is out of my Turbo Trans Am. We definitely had a bad tune and I went to the track when it was like 100 degrees out. 93 octane pump gas, not the best tune, hot day. And yeah, but I did drive it home with this piston, with this hole. I drove it 100 miles home. I just had to fill it up with about two quarts of extra oil on the way home. But on the highway, it was kind of funny. Once the torque converter locked up, I mean, it's still running on seven cylinders. It was smooth. It was smooth as glass. And we were going so fast, you couldn't even see any smoke coming out of the tailpipe. So. There were a few times where I kind of like tricked myself into thinking the engine was okay because I didn't know this had happened. I knew something bad happened um, and I assumed this happened, but there were a few times I was just cruising and I'm like, we're okay, this thing's gonna be fine. And then I'd come to a light and be shaken and blowing smoke everywhere. But anyway, that wasn't the case for the lightning though. Go forward. Shoot. There we go. This one's just super dirty. I didn't clean this obviously, but yeah, pretty good shape. Yeah, got a bearing coming down with this one. It popped off the cap. It's got a little Ford stamp on there. I say these bearings did really good. And just another dirty piston. No damage to this one. All right, last one before we get the crank out. And this one's got some damage. Nothing horrible, but it started. It started right over here. Oh, wait a minute. We got a little piece of ring too. But yeah, this one was starting to go. Starting to get a little little scratchy here on the sides. All right, so overall this crank looks really good. The journals don't have any excessive wear. There are no scratches. So I think we're good to reuse the crank and the block, but I am gonna separate the two. We're gonna remove this crank right now, send it to the machine shop to be polished, and I'll try and get footage of that for you guys. And we're gonna send the block out to be cleaned and also bored out to fix any of the scuffing and scratches in the cylinders. And then we're definitely going to paint this as well and make it look nice and pretty. So at this point, I'm gonna remove the crank and this is a very interesting setup here on the bottom end. So you have two bolts here and then you have two pins or dowels right here. And then you do have your side bolts for the main. So you have one here and one on the other side. So I guess you could call this a four bolt main um, it's kind of a hybrid because the dowel pins don't offer the strength of actually having four bolts here on the bottom, um, but they do offer some support and then you have the side bolts here. So I'm not sure of the exact terminology for this main setup, but I'd say it's not as strong as a real six bolt, but it's also stronger than your traditional four bolt. And I'm just gonna go around and do all of the side bolts first. I gotta say that first crack, very satisfying. And we'll go ahead and zip these out all the way. And I'm gonna be getting some ARP hardware, uh, I think for the bottom end as well. I'm definitely doing head studs, but I might do some of these main bolts as well. And then these guys, for the most part, just come right out. Some of them are harder than others. And if these get stuck, you can pry them out a little bit. There's probably a special tool for these, but we're just gonna be real gentle. There we go. And just to show you guys, it's very easy to move the crank around with nothing connected to it. So if you ever put an engine together and it's not this easy, you did something wrong. All right, time for our big main cap bolts. I'll go ahead and just loosen these all up by hand right off the bat. Then we're gonna remove this threaded standoff here. That is where the oil pump pickup bolts to. And it's not held in very tight. All right, there you go. All right, well, I was too excited to take this engine apart and I forgot to take off the plate here for the rear main. No big deal. We can sneak in here and get it off. But after the flex plate, I should have taken this guy off. Now right, let's get this rear main cover off. 
And these are glued on, so. There we go. The rear main seal stuck on the crank here. So check it out. The uh, rear main seal kind of came apart there on us. At this point, we're just going to remove the remainder of these bolts. And now we can go ahead and lift off the main cap. There we go. Excellent. Awesome bearings, these look great. And then you can see here that these are labeled number one and number two and so on. So you can't mess this up. And they also give you a little arrow here to point towards the front of the engine. Yeah, a little bit of wear on this guy. Nothing too crazy. All right, last main cap. And we got number five coming out. And this should have a three-piece thrust bearing, so can see this part of the thrust bearing here and then on the other side there isn't anything it just rides right inside of this groove on the crank and then you can see here we have the other half of the thrust bearing and there's one over here too so only three pieces that's normal yeah hey alex can you do a crank curl for me oh yeah here we go i wonder what this weighs oh it's heavy this is more than i would curl this is a lot more than i would actually curl wow this is really heavy Oh, yeah. I don't know how many of these I can do. Jeez. Come on, you can do another one. We need a light and crankshaft here. It'd probably gain like 100 horsepower. We got forged forearms. All right, forged forearms. Here we go. Let's see if I can do five of these things. One, two, three. And the proper form here is to just get your whole body in a big swinging motion. And say multi-muscle group exercise. Yeah. Okay, so then you can see here we have our main bearings. Let's go ahead and pop these out. These are all getting replaced anyway. And you can see here the thrust washers that I was talking about, or thrust bearings. All right, I got the Tesla suspension lowering here so we can load it up. And this is what happens when your pickup truck goes down. You have to haul engines in, in Teslas. It's mandatory. So we got our moving blanket. All right, let's get any of the remaining oil. There we go. Perfect. So what do you do when your pickup truck has a bad engine and you need to haul an engine? Well, you use a Tesla. This is all we have right here. This is the best vehicle in my entire fleet outside of the pickup truck to haul an engine because it's a hatch. I guess we could use the GSX, but that would... It's a higher hatch. It's a higher hatch. Right. Yeah, I just, I lowered the suspension. Look at this tailgate action on the Tesla. All right, Peter. Let's do it. Do you think we can lift this up? This is a cast iron block here, people. I think you can do it. I think you've been doing your uh, cam curls. And, uh, yeah. And crank crank curls. curls. Yeah. <laughs> I think we can try. Oh my God, this is light. This is light. Okay. Totally normal. Rich rebuilds. Eat your heart out, buddy. This is how you V8 swap a Tesla. That was the easiest thing ever. Okay, we gotta get the crank. Seriously, if you don't wanna buy dumbbells and workout equipment, you could probably pick up a used crank for like 50 bucks and do a lot. You can do a lot with this. Ugh, look at this overhead press. Although it's not, it's a little bit heavier on the, on, like one of your arms is gonna be stronger than the other. Okay, so this might not be 100% the proper method of transporting engine components but we're going like about two blocks away. Luckily we found a machine shop right down the street and we're gonna bring them the main caps as well. They're all labeled, so we will know where to go. And uh, yes, excellent, look at this. There you have it guys. My SVT Lightning engine is, is really bad. This started off just needing head gaskets and now it needs everything. And we could simply rebuild it with stock parts, but no, we couldn't. I mean, who, who would do that? No one, no one would do that. I had a few people comment, they're like, you should uh, replace the bearings and rings and stuff on this motor while you got it apart. I'm like, dude, if I'm doing that, if I'm going that far, it's getting forged everything and a bigger blower and a complete exhaust system, E85, multiple fuel pumps, probably more intercooler cooling and uh, whatever else you need in a Lightning. So anyway, guys, that'll do it for this video. I hope you really enjoyed this carnage at my expense. I know I did actually, I did have a lot of fun here. 
Um, so we're gonna send this out to the machine shop. It's realistically gonna be like three or four weeks before I get it back, but that'll give me time to order up our pistons and rods and figure everything else out so that when we get the block back, we can just kind of reassemble it all in possibly one video. So if you enjoyed this one, give it a big thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe if you're new, and most importantly, have an awesome day. And if you have an SVT Lightning, pick up an SVT Lightning shirt. I'll leave a link and a coupon code down below. Catch you in the next video.